<laughs> All right, just some quick reminders before we get going. Oh. Being stabbed. All right. Um, don't forget that our exam opens up tonight. And it will run all weekend long, like always. Um, just don't forget to do it. Um, I, there's always one, always one of you. Um, so please remember to do that. Um, also remember, on Monday we will not come to class, right? But you will log in. Remember, we will log in under the group um, exam collaborate, so just a different location. Um, but the same time as always, right? Um, so you can do that group test. <clears throat> um, otherwise, the last thing I just want to remind you is I did send out an email yesterday, the day before. Time does not matter anymore. Um, that listed all of the resources I could think of that we have um, accumulated over the course of the semester. So I highly recommend that you um, take a look at that if you haven't yet. Um, there's a lot of variety on there, so there should be something to fit everybody. Um, in particular, I did want to draw everyone's attention to one, of course, the YouTube page. Um, again, right, because it's easy and searchable, and it's pretty much a new thing that no one in a previous course has had before to be able to go back and review lectures and find ones that specifically cater to whatever needs that you have. Um, also, don't forget, um, particularly for some of these units we've had in this exam sector, that the lab is a really good resource, right? Um, both with our lab manual, right, so our recitation packets and our polls, um, and for the videos, right, because none of this stuff that we've done, for the most part, has been brand new. Um, it's been some kind of review um, or uh, re-detailing of stuff we've done. And so, again, while I'm not going to go through and get questions off of your polls, or, excuse me, for example, the information from there makes really, really good study guides. Um, and so those are really helpful tools for you as well. So I highly recommend using those um, as study tools as well. Um, and that's in addition to all the other things you have, right? The goal lists and the avatar videos that can help focus what kind of information you want to be paying attention to or ways to study and all of that kind of business. Yeah, um, I just wanted to remind you guys to check into that if you have not done that yet. Um, Good tool. Okay. So today uh, we are going to work through a uh, part of our cell cycle packet, all of which will be a review, with the exception of one thing. So I'm going to add one stage to the cell cycle. Otherwise, nothing that you're going to hear today is new. Um, all of the new stuff will be for after the test. Um, so as we look at our roadmap. Um, we'll be doing most of the bullets, but they're all review bullets. Um, so vocabulary, um, the function of mitosis, and the major stages. The control of the cell cycle is actually the bulk of the unit. And so this would be looking at stuff of how do we control mitosis, um, and then things like what causes cancer and tumors, which is really cool topics. A complicated conversation, as you might imagine. And we will talk about that stuff, but we're certainly going to do it after the exam. So it takes um, usually two or so days um, to discuss that all on its own after we've understood what mitosis is about. Um, so um, let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is a review of the vocabulary, um, which um, should be a good review to you. Remember, you've done. Um, all of this stuff in the last week or two, depending on which lab you're in. All right, so let's take a peek. I just feel like this is so loud for the online kids. All right. At our DNA. So remember when we're doing this stuff, right, we care about this because we're looking at DNA, right? All of the information of the cell. And specifically, how it's packaged. So, if we look over here, what color am I using? And most of the time, when I am in a cell, I'm going to find myself in this form. 
okay, in the chromatin form, right? Because it's pulled apart, it's unraveled. And this is important as we think about, for example, having things around your house. Okay? If I want to think about using a cup, right, I want that cup to be in a cabinet right, where I can easily access it. If I have my clothes, right, I want my clothes to be hanging in my closet or thrown on my bedroom floor, right, where I can easily access them. Okay? And that's how I want to live most of my life with all of these things. Easily accessible throughout my house where I expect to find them, right? in the locations I expect to find them so I can use them. So that's the form that we have chromatin in, right? We think about them being in a library, okay? I can look up in the library and find the book on seagulls. Go get that book. I can go get that information. Okay. However, when you go to move, Okay. I do not want to take each cup individually, move it to my new house. Okay. Each t-shirt individually, move it to my new house. My husband would have killed me. We would have been there all day just moving my clothes. He was annoyed enough with how many boxes we had. Okay. So, when you go to move, you package or box things up. You condense things down into small, neat little packages. You do this for a variety of reasons, right? One, because you don't want to move things in one item at a time. That would take forever. Two, okay, if we think about carrying one cup at a time or even, woof, right, trying to take an armload of cups at a time. Let's try to make this go faster. It's a disaster waiting to happen, right? You're going to drop some and crack some and lose some. Okay? Now, when you're talking about cups or like t-shirts, okay? Maybe it's not the end of the world. Worst case scenario, you sleep on the couch. Okay? But when we're talking about information in the cell, this is extraordinarily bad. Okay? You may have just lost information on how to make hair color, uh -huh. okay. how to make your heart pump. <laughs> okay. We can't afford to damage or lose information. Okay, so we want to box this up. Okay. So the box version of that is called a chromosome. All right, so when I'm looking at the form I have on here, okay, which is the duplicated form, so I have two copies right, held together, copy one, copy two. When I have those two copies, and only when those two copies are together, okay, those two copies are identical, right? They're copies. to call them twins. And if we think about them being twins, we can think about them being sisters. So only when these two are together we call them sister chromatids. And this gives us the capacity to say the whole thing is a chromosome or one part is a sister chromatid. Right, so I can talk about one side or the other. Now, 
lot of crazy terms here that all look the same. Right? Chromatin, chromosome, chromatids. Don't shoot the messenger. I did not name them. One more thing to point out here. Give myself some space. A sister chromatid can only be a sister chromatid when she's with her twin. Right? It's part of her identity. So here we have sister chromatid. They're together. But, I can actually erase it. You're going to bear with me. If we pull these apart, if I remove one of the sisters, okay, so now I'm all alone, so I'm a chromosome. Okay. When we're by ourselves, we lose our sister identity. So a lone chromosome. Okay. You can only be a sister if you're part of a pair. Does that make sense? That's one of the hardest things to kind of wrap our heads around. Correct. They're only chromatids when they're together. A single one is a chromosome. Correct. Excellent. Any other questions about the terms on this page? Okay, so here we see our terms again. You see my single. Oops, what was about to happen? It's called a chromosome, right? A lone chromosome. Okay. On my right hand here, I have it doubled up, so the whole thing is called a chromosome. Okay. And then each half can be a sister, right? right. You can have parts be sisters, but only when they're in pairs. Since we have a pair, each part of that pair then can be a sister chromatid. Everybody see that? We have a long chromosome. All right, so the last two terms, the only one that's really probably new is the loci, but this one at least makes sense. The only one that makes sense. So remember when we're talking about DNA, the reason we care about DNA is because this is where all our information is, right? Our great library. We keep saying information, okay? We're really talking about genes. This is information for something. And for hair color. For height, for liver function, for heartbeat, whatever. Okay, genes to do things. Okay, so if we think about this from our library perspective, this is our book for seagulls, a specific piece of information. So just like 
in a library where that book is in a specific place in that library, right? On a very specific shelf in a very specific row in that library. I can go find that spot in that library and get that book on those seagulls. In the seagulls, yeah. Okay. Same thing's happening with our genes. I want to find the gene for hair color. That needs to be in a very specific place. Okay, so if I need to code, I need to make hair color. We can always do that, right? So we call that foci, location. Look, a word that kind of makes sense. Can't take credit for this one either, though. Does that still feel good? Does that kind of make sense? Lastly, we have our centromere. All these words start with C, man. Okay. Centromere, right here. So if we think about our two sister chromatids, okay, that make up our duplicated chromosome, they're held together. Okay, so I like to think of this as like a rubber band. I like that thin layer of chocolate that holds together a Kit Kat bar. So that's what a centromere is. It's just a very small spot between our two sister chromatids that are holding them together for a little while. Okay, feel good? Any questions about any of the terms that we've used? A lot of them start with C. A lot of them start with chromo. Okay. So make sure that's very clear. I, just, I want to move you to the other side. All right, just sit there then, I guess. So remember, as we think about our chromo words, okay, here we are in the cell, in our nucleus, right? Most of the time, in fact, 90% of the time, okay, we need to be functioning like a cell. I need to be working it. Okay. In other words, the information that's in our library needs to be accessible. Right? Our heart needs to pump, our livers need to be livers, our skin needs to protect us. We need to be able to make hair, whatever, right? Okay, which means most of the time your DNA is going to be in this chromatid form, right? Just like when you're living your life, most of the time your stuff is unpacked, accessible, and spread out throughout your house. It's only during a very short period of time, 10% okay, or less, just like us, okay, when you're actually moving. So when we're actually going to move the DNA around, split it up and move it, then we're going to package it up. Okay, so we're going to package it up. Condense it down into these boxes and move it around. That we're going to see it in these chromosomes and made up of two sister chromatids. Nobody wants to live out of boxes for most of their life. 
the only while we're stuck moving. Make sense? Any questions about this? Okay. okay, so now let's look at mitosis itself. Okay. The key here is to remember in lab, you learned about two different types of cell division, right? Mitosis and meiosis. We're not going to talk about meiosis for a little while yet, but in both cases, we want to think about how does that function play a direct role in what we expect the outcome of this division to be. Okay. In other words, how is it proceeding to inform how the final outcome, right, the daughter cells, okay, our finished product, look compared to the parent cells, right, our initial starting point. Okay. We can use that to check ourselves, right, what are our expectations. What is the function of mitosis, by the way? So what, what is the goal it's serving for the the cells or the tissue or your body. Growth and repair. Good. Okay, so I want to make small or juvenile organisms larger. And I want to take damaged tissue or damaged cells and repair or replace them. Okay, so this is what's going to inform us of what our expectation should be. If I take some damaged tissue, right, like I have on the arm here, I need to replace okay, those missing cells. Okay. But I want to make sure that I do so okay, in a way where I get a nice, smooth, even arm when I'm done, right? I don't want it to look like the Appalachian Mountains. Okay, so the cells that fill in here want to look like the cells that are out here, right? In other words, okay, the new daughter cells, okay, the final cells, they want to look identical to the parent cells or the starting cells. In other words, our goal is sameness. We can use that to check what we're doing as we go along and check our final outcome and make sure that what we've done as we've gone fits our needs, fits our outcomes. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go ahead and go through the stages. Again, all of these will be familiar except one. So the key when we're looking at these, and my best recommendation is make sure that you know the terms, um, all of which will be familiar. Um, and the best way to study for most of these is just draw a really simple version, like you did in lab, because you've already drawn them all when you did in your lab manual. Okay. The first stage, right, and this, remember, is not part of cell division, right? This is pre-mitosis. We're going to spend most of our life here, right, about 90% or so. Okay. Doing our job, working it. We want to leave our DNA in that chromatin form, unraveled, right? Your house is unpacked. So you can live your life. Be able to get that cup, be able to get that t-shirt. Okay. This is 
such a large portion, it is actually broken down into three subphases. So that's what we're going to look at here. Okay, the first part, G1, when we see a G, and we know this has to do with growth. This phase is coming right out after a previous cell division. So I like to think about this as like growing up, right? We are a bebe cell, and so we're growing up to adulthood. To a full-sized cell. Okay, so we're going from little baby cell to a big adult cell. We're getting a little more cytoplasm, slightly bigger cell membrane, just making ourselves bigger. But remember, it's still got to be a big boy cell, right? Still have to do whatever my job is. So if I'm a heart cell, I have to have electrical impulses, make my heart beat. Okay. If I'm a skin cell, I still have to be protecting allowing oxygen to pass through, and whatever it is, I have to do my job. With me so far? Not so bad? Okay. S phase. The S4 synthesis. In this case, specifically and exclusively, DNA synthesis. Okay. Remember, synthesis means to create. Okay, so what we're going to do is duplicate our DNA material. Okay, so we're going to have DNA times 2. <coughs> This is still in the nucleus here. So basically everything inside the nucleus is getting doubled up. Now remember, we're still in that chromatin form. Okay? Still working it. I'm good at that. Okay? I still have to do my job this whole time. So even though there's a lot of stuff now in my nucleus, I still have to work. So all of this stuff is still unraveled, still accessible. Still with me? All right. Lastly, we have another growth phase. We have a G, that means growth again. So this is G2, our second growth phase, right? Now we were already a full-sized adult. Okay, so now we're going to be a chonker, chonky cell. So I've doubled everything in my nucleus. So now pretty much I have to double everything else. I have to become a real fatty. What else in my cell needs to double? If I'm going to split my cell in half, so I have two equal living cells, what do I need to make two of? What do cells need to live besides DNA? Organelles, right? So now I need to double my mitochondria, I need to double my ribosomes, I need to double my endoplasmic reticulum. We need all of that stuff too. And that's going to make me big, fat, and full. Okay. So that's what's happening during our growth two phase. All the important cell stuff that we thought we'd never have to think about again after tour of the cell, that stuff is what's doubling up. Okay. So at the end of G2, I'm ginormous. Okay, all my organelles have doubled up. Okay. I have a big old double.
doubled up nucleus, but everything is still functioning, doing my job, I'm still in chromatin form. Any questions about any of this? Interface feel good? Alright, so let's get into actual mitosis. So we're ready to move. First thing at the seams, right? So, like anybody, the first step of moving, okay, and we're going to think prophase. We've seen this prefix before, like prokaryote, right? Pro meaning early. Right, so the first or early phase, just like the early phase of moving, we have two jobs when we go to move, right? Do our crap in boxes, hire some movers. Okay. That's the same things that we're going to do here. Okay, so step one, put our crap in boxes. Okay. We need to take that chromatin and package it up nice and safe. And put it in boxes. Okay. So the word condense just means to box or package. Right. So we're taking that chromatin and switching it over to chromosomes. With that nice, safe, boxed form. The other thing we're going to do is hire movers. Our movers are called centrosomes. Can our centrosomes have what are called spindle fibers? These are like the arms. Okay, so the center of zones are like the people, the movers, the actual organelle. The spindle fibers are the arms on our movers. Yeah, that are actually going to do the work. Okay, so that's the big key that we've done here. We hired the movers, so we created center zones and their arms, the spindle fibers. And we put stuff in boxes. We started packing. Right, so we condensed our chromosomes. That's pretty intuitive, right? That makes sense? Pretty good so far? Right, so here's our new phase. We skipped this one in lab because it's impossible to see under a microscope, so there's no point to talk about it, right? So now we want to talk about it. So here we still see that early. Okay, so before metaphase. Okay, so there's some key features that are happening here. This first one being one of the most important. Okay, so remember... So all of our DNA is inside this protective library wall, okay, the nuclear envelope. And it's keeping it safe from all the skyvy stuff that happens inside the cell. Okay, but our goal here is to move houses, right? In fact, to separate into two equal houses. So if we're going to do that, we actually need to get out of this library and end up in two different libraries. So we have to break down our library wall. This is temporary. Right? Ultimately, we want to keep our DNA as safe as possible. So we're going to keep this down for as little time as possible. And it does have to come down. Okay? Your stuff has to leave your house to get into the other house, right? even if it's pouring rain. Now the other thing that happens
Okay. Is our chromosomes and our spindle fibers attach? Here's our centrosome. Remember, those are our movers. If they have arms. These are the spindle fibers. How do you spell that? They're on the page and I can't spell them. Good gracious. Okay. So our centrosomes are the movers and their arms are the spindle fibers, right? And they've eventually, or they've actually picked up, right, and are holding on to our boxes. Our chromosomes. These centrosomes have also set themselves up on these opposite poles. And by opposing poles, we just mean opposite ends of the cell. Right, so they're ready to move because our goals are to get things on opposite sides, right? To Opposite. Okay, so prometaphase is really like the setup stage. We're staging ourselves for the big move. This is the newest stage. So I want to pause for a second and make sure everybody feels good about what's going on here and that the terms feel okay. Are we feel good quiet or it's very Friday quiet? A little both is quick. If you feel good quiet, I can do feel good quiet. Okay. So back into some familiar territory, right? Metaphase. I want to think metaphase. Middle. That'll help with remembering what happened here. Okay, so the big key here is our movers are going to line all of our boxes up, all of our chromosomes up along the middle of the cell, okay, what's called the metaphyseal plate, which is also in eventually where we're going to cut the cell in half. Okay. Only one thing happens, only one thing happens at this stage because this is so important. Okay. We really want to make sure everything lines up really well, that we have everything. We're eventually going to use this to move from. It's kind of like laying all your stuff out before you put it in the moving truck. Do I have everything? Am I sure this is everything? Did I lose anything? Right? Let's check it over. Okay. Making all the little kindergartners line up before they go to lunch. Is everybody here? Hold on to the rope before we go. Okay. So it's a safety check. Is everything here before we do anything else? Because once we move on, we can't go back. Right? Once you turn your keys in, you can't go back into the apartment again. Okay, so we have one really important job. Line everybody up and check that they're there. Metaphase, middle. Feel good? Also one of the easiest to see under the microscope. Everybody behaves. All right. Next up, anaphase. When I see anaphase, I want to thank anaphase away. Another way that can help remember. Or a part, whatever works for you. Okay, so the big key here is I'm going to take my sister chromatids and I'm going to snap that centromere. I'm going to break that Kit Kat. 
that does not look good. Let's try a different color. There we go. I'm going to pull them away to opposite ends of the cell where the movers are, right? Along those single fibers. All right, so our movers are pulling with their arms right to the opposite ends of the cell. No, sister! Right? Pulling away to opposite ends. No, sister! Okay, so we snap that Kit Kat. Our sisters have been separated. Once your sisters or your pairs are apart, not sisters anymore, right? But identity is lost. So now, chromosomes. Remember, a lone chromosome. Okay, so they're pulled along those arms, the spindle fibers. To opposing edges of the cell. Okay, what will eventually be their new houses? And again, not a lot's happening here because the key is we want to clean, break, okay, and get them pulled all the way to the opposite edge. Again, nice and clear. Everybody understand what's happening here? All the terms make sense. Last but not least, that I'll have a good one for Tila Phase. Okay, but what we need to do then is make two distinct houses. Maybe that's it. That works, right? See the face? Two houses? Oh, she's not impressed. <laughs> We're going to stick with it, but that's not what I've ever come up with, all right? So a couple of things have to happen here, right? The first of which is cytokinesis, right? So remember, cyto is that prefix we've seen before, which means cell. So this is cell cleaving or cell separating. And so this is what we have happening in the image here. Okay, well, we're going to pinch along where metaphase had lined up. Okay, so that plasma membrane and that cytoplasm is going to pinch together. We'll get two separate cells. Okay. But as far as the actual DNA goes, okay, we have a quick checkpoint. That's definitely the word check. Okay. Your daughter cells, which means the end, right? Do they look the same? Okay, remember, this was our big goal, sameness. They should be the same as each other. And they should look the same as what we started with at G1 before we duplicated anything. Lastly, but certainly not least, okay, our nuclear envelope has to come back, right? That protects our DNA. We lost it in prometaphase. We could move houses. And now we need to reestablish it. But we still need that protection as these cells now go about their business of living their best lives. Any question about telophase or any 
of the stages that we've talked about today or any of the terms that we use. Still not super sure if the silence is good or bad. It is very Friday y. And all sorts of. Okay, that's it. So Fallon said, so this is what I'm writing at the bottom. Um, trying to write out. Uh, is that she remembers the stages of my mitosis using PMAT. Um, and then someone else said that they actually did PPMAT to try to remember it, or they used it in high school to try to remember the order. That can be a useful tool. I've not heard that before, so that's a nifty tool. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. Uh, these mnemonic things never work for me. <laughs> not since I learned the order of the planets. But they did like the my very educated mother 